from Forex Traders Daily. This is your daily analysis with Ross Mullins, live from Richmond, Virginia. Hello, everyone. This is today's video analysis for August 8th, 2016. I hope everyone had a great weekend and ready to get started with trading this week. In today's video, I'm going to do somewhat of a general overview of each of the U.S. currency pairs in anticipation of this week's trading. I'm going to highlight some of the key levels that we'll be looking for entry and exit opportunities. We have a relatively slow news calendar for the beginning of this week. And, you know, of course, you'll want to check your financial calendars for the latest news releases. Relatively slow compared to last week because last week we had significant news that caused uh, market movement across all of the U.S. currency pairs. So let's take a look at that. What we're going to be generally looking for at the beginning of this week is some follow through, carry through from that news from last week, the positive uh, NFP data that we had at the end of last week, giving us a boost to the U.S. dollar. We had some negative movement out of the UK because of interest rate news. So we definitely will be looking for some follow through on each of those currency pairs because of that news. Let's get started here on the USD CHF, the US dollar versus the Swiss franc. A couple of things to t talk about. We have been studying this downtrend channel, channel, the two red trend lines that you see here on my chart, for several weeks. We saw the market fall off of that, the top of that channel last week, pushing all the way back down into the 96s, but uh, recovery coming all the way back up into the 98s late last week as it pushed back into the resistance level. So I think we want to focus back in to the upside now that we've seen the buyers come back in here for this currency pair. Let's go ahead and zoom it in a couple of times. You can see the recovery coming back in last week, pushing and challenging 9,800. I think it's important for us to watch for that breakout scenario. We don't want to assume it's going to break 9,800. We want to watch for the real indications of a breakout above here. To me, a real indication of a breakout is an open and close above that level, 9800, 9810, the orange shaded area that you see there on the chart. You don't have the open and close here. It'd take a couple of days for that to really set up here on the daily time frame. Let's take it down to the four hour time frame, and now we can start to see a little bit of a different picture where we see the market pressuring back above 9800 and the current four hour candle staying above it. So for this week, as long as we can stay above 9,800 in this orange shaded area, I think we're focused in on buying. If we zoom it out one more time here on the four hour, you can see the challenge red circle didn't break it, turned around and went back higher, or sorry, went back lower. The blue circle did break it and challenged higher and dipped back one more time and then even made a new high. So we need it to stay above this 9,800 level, the 9,810 level, the orange shaded area. If we're going to see the continuation of last week's move and a turn back up here to the purple zone. The risk in this entire scenario is a turn back underneath the orange zone, back underneath 9790. We're likely looking for it back into the yellow zone this week for the uh, USD CHF. Zoom in one more time, get a real good close look at that orange shaded area. Breakout, we continue to buy towards the mid to upper 9800s for the US franc. Just the opposite of that, of course, is the euro. We saw the 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 sellers come back in here for this currency pair. Last week, we took a, a rally higher all the way up into the, the low 112s, uh, capping out underneath this green trend line and the 100 period simple moving average here on the daily time frame and started the free fall last week on news for the US. Uh, so we'll definitely be watching for the continuation of that downward slide here uh, as we go through our week this week. Zooming in a couple of times here on the daily. Again, you can see the, the, the fall that happened touching into the resistance, back under the pink zone, went to the green zone, hesitated, back under the green zone, down to the yellow zone. If we're going to see a breakout lower, it needs to break the yellow zone. And I don't think we're ready to do that quite yet here on the daily time frame. Next opportunities for this currency pair could be selling rallies to the resistance, 1.1100. Take it down to the four-hour time frame. Zoom it out one time. Look at this. Take a look at the uh, the pattern, the price pattern set up here. Congestion zone, blue box, breakout, congestion zone, blue box. So again, if we're going to go short, we want to go short as close as we can to get to get to 1.1100. We look for the breakout underneath the yellow zone and the continuation down into the 1.1000 level. So selling rallies to resistance, breaks of support will be our focus. No real reason to go long at the current moment on the euro dollar. GBP USD, same thing here. No real reason to go long. All the fundamentals point to going short here that we had from last week. We see this black box. We've been studying that for a couple of days in the live trade room. Take a look at that black box. We 
um, resistance at the top, the yellow shaded area up here. Let me see if I can pull that over a little bit. We found some congestion around the green zone, support into the purple zone. L look at the blue circles here. It'll be easier to see that on a four hour. Uh, but now we're underneath 1.3085. That's the key point is that we didn't break it back here. Zoom it down to the four hour time frame. Take a look at those blue circles. One, two, three, four times, even five times right here. No breakout under the purple zone. No open and close until now. So that becomes our scenario. We want to sell underneath that purple zone 1.3085 3115 is the purple zone our risk is pretty clear a risk is that it breaks back above there so we look for selling on rallies to resistance we look for it to target back down at least to the 3000 level and if the currency pair can break 1.3000 i think we're likely looking for the continuation at least back down here towards the orange zone and the 2900 level for the gbp usd this week Moving on over to the USD CAD, we've seen a rise, a rising trend pattern here for this currency pair over the past several weeks. That's the blue trend line. And over the past few weeks, we've been discussing the fact, and I'll put one more trend line here. Let's change it to red like the other ones. We've been discussing the fact that within the trend pattern that we've been studying here, we've seen falls. And if you take a look at each one of those four red trend lines here, one, two, three, four, it went down to the blue trend line, found support, and bounced back up. So that's been the pattern of the trend. With that pattern, we would expect to look for a new high. Uh, with that pattern, of course, it's going to take some some news. It's going to, and we had news last week. Some poor news for the uh, out of Canada uh, on Friday. We had some good news out of the U.S. on Friday. All that sending it higher. We also would look for falling oil prices. Continued fall in oil prices. We'll look for this to go back up again in the direction of the current pattern again. One, two, three, four times, dipping to the blue trend line, bouncing off and going back up. Take it down to the four-hour time frame. There's the move from last Friday where we had negative news out of Canada, positive news out of the U.S., significant rally higher. I think this is very interesting for us today. We found resistance at this little orange zone, 3175.85. Now we're falling back to 3135 where it found resistance here and here and even some support here. So we see support. Resistance, resistance. We know this yellow zone is a decision zone that the market has made trading decisions at before. So that's what we're looking for. 1.3135 becomes an opportunity to look for support and maybe take a turn back towards the orange zone where we're currently finding resistance or even a new high back up here towards the green shaded area. All in all, the risk and reversal would be back underneath the yellow zone. So we just don't want to do that. We don't want to get it underneath 1.31 again. So underneath 131, we may look for a new fallback down into the mid to low 1.3000. Staying above 3100, I think we're looking for a new rally in the direction of the current momentum for the U.S. CAD. Moving on to the U.S. Yen, similar scenario. We saw uh, the downward slide over the past few weeks, moving into multi-year lows down here or into the 100s uh, multiple times. Red circle back several weeks ago, we found support there. Then over the past couple of weeks, we found support here. So moving back higher now on the U.S. Yen. Let's go ahead and take it down to the four-hour time frame. We're looking for you know, a pattern shift, a, a shift in the trend pattern, lower highs, being a downtrend, higher lows being an uptrend. We we see the market moving up, but we don't really have a significant higher low yet. So I think it would be more prudent to watch for the market to make some sort of pullback and then break out. So even back down into the mid 101s could be a better opportunity to go long for the US yen. At this point, we're challenging 102.45. Look at the congestion back here around 102.45, underneath 102.50. Congestion here. So that's where we are now. What's it going to take to go higher? It needs to break 102.45. So two things to look for. The dip back to the pink zone or the breakout above 102.45. We're probably looking for a turn back into the 103s for the year, uh, U.S. yen. Moving on over to the AUD USD, I don't think the buyers are really ready to give up on this pair, even though uh, fundamentally we did have an, uh, an opportunity last week to see resistance and this make a turn back lower, but it doesn't look like the buyers are ready to give up on this pair. Uh, red trend line uptrend, blue trend line downtrend, green trend line uptrend, and that pattern has not shifted yet. We don't see a shift in the trend pattern. So we're still really in an uptrend pattern, and that has not changed. The black box is very interesting, though, because we've been stuck in there for quite a long time now with resistance at the top. So I'd be very difficult for me to suggest buying closer to the green zone. Take a look at that. One, two times back here, finding resistance just underneath 76.50. That's the bottom of that green zone. So I can't really suggest buying this currency 
pricing pair this close to the resistance level. Just doesn't make sense to buy it this close to resistance. There's only two reasons to buy the Australian dollar. It either dips back down to the pink zone, which it's already done today, or breaks above that green zone. So if you're a buyer looking to buy it, you need to go back down or break through the resistance level. Otherwise, it could be a very good opportunity to look for resistance and reversal from 76.50, 76.85. That's the green shaded area. Watching for resistance and reversal there could be something to watch for today. Four-hour time frame doesn't really change that uh, uh, analysis much. We know that the green zone is resistance. We saw it here. Even last week we saw it. And then the fallback on positive U.S. data now making its way back up towards 76.50. So, again, I can't recommend buying into that green zone because we know it's resistance. So it either needs to dip back to the pink zone or break above the green zone before you would buy it. Otherwise, watching, again, for resistance and reversal clues from the green shaded area for the Australian dollar. And lastly, moving over to the NZD USD, New Zealand, New Zealand dollar versus US dollar. Of course, we have some news out of New Zealand uh, midweek this week, so we'll want to watch that. But take a look at this blue box. We've been kind of stuck inside that blue box for several weeks now, supported the bottom resistance at the top. We came off close to the top, the green shaded area last week. Positive US data sent it underneath this little black box in this period of congestion. For our time frame, again, there was that little black box, a period of congestion, found resistance at the green zone, pushed under the blue zone. I think that blue zone is going to be a, cl a critical factor this week. One po or sorry, 71.55, 71.80 is the blue shaded area. Under it, I think we're looking for resistance. This support becoming resistance, 71. 55. The risk there, of course, is a break back above the blue zone. We start to work our way higher. Currently, obviously, and obviously, we are finding support right here into the low 71s, just above 7100. 7100 to 20 is the yellow shaded area. This is our current support. If we're going to see it continue to go lower, it needs to break underneath that yellow shaded area, heading back down into the, the mid 7000s, the purple shaded area. But for the time being, for for today, if you're looking to go short, it needs to go up to the blue zone or break through the yellow zone. If you're looking for clues to reversal, uh, maybe the yellow zone becomes your first opportunity, but I think back above the blue zone may be a better opportunity for reversal clues here for the New Zealand dollar this week. From Forex Traders Daily, this has been your daily analysis with Ross Mullins. If you would like to get Ross's analysis on all the currency pairs he's watching and all the trades he takes today, join him in his live trade room by clicking on the link below. Please leave any comments you have about today's video in the comments section below.